Okay, it's going to be a review of the final AEW pay-per-view of the year. This is World's End. You know, pretty much in the uh, you know spot you would you would see Starcade in. So that 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 kind of went through my mind. Uh, you know, leading up to this show, um, th- definitely a weird show. I, I wouldn't say this is one of the best uh, you know AEW shows of the year. Uh, I think the un- undercard was somewhat weak. Uh, triple main event was pretty damn good. Um, weird show though, very weird show, but you, 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 you definitely had some, um, you know, memorable moments here. You had Samoa Joe winning the AEW title after a whole year with MJF as champion. So pretty eventful. You get to see who the devil is. It's Adam Cole, baby, you know, Roderick Strong is, uh, you know, made the assist with the, um, you know, Taven Bennett. You also got Warlow in the stable as well. So, uh, the aftermath, was pretty cool. The aftermath definitely did deliver. You know, I, I think that was one of the selling points to actually order the show is, you know, to see how that angle was going to play out. And so, yeah, Cole turns on MJF. He doesn't give him the dynamite diamond in time. That that leads you to Samoa Joe uh, choking MJF out. Doesn't tap out. But, um, you know, the third time the referee holds his arm up, it drops. So that's how Samoa Joe wins. The AEW world title. Um, Eddie Kingston, as predicted, triple crown winner. Him and Moxie, I thought, had the had the match of the night. I, I thought it was great stuff. Um, you know, the Edge and Christian stuff was pretty damn cool. Uh, you know, it, it was, you know, the environment and the atmosphere was, was pretty damn cool. There, there were a couple things about the match that, you know, didn't go as smoothly, you know, as you would have liked. Um, and it, it was pretty weird the way they booked it. But, um... What really sucks here is that I think a lot of the discussion in, 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 on the aftermath of the show is going to be about Jericho. Um, apparently, there's some allegations against Jericho. I, you know, at first I was like, why is the fans booing the shit out of Jericho? I, I, I didn't know what it was. I thought maybe just they're just acting weird. But yeah, I mean, I've never heard Jericho booed this hard before, as a, as a at least as a baby face. So um, yeah, it sucks, man. It definitely does suck. I mean, I'm a huge Jericho fan. We, we, you know, there's people, including myself, that just love Jericho. So, yeah, bitter pill to swallow. Um, you know, let, let, let's just try to get through this thing, man. But first match of the night. Uh, you have an eight-man tag match. This this featured everybody that lost uh, in the, you know, Continental Classic Tournament. So, the, you know, it, th- th- this was interesting because it was like the opposite of Bola. You know, when, when you when you go to the Battle of Los Angeles, um, you know, Excalibur would always have the, you know, all the guys that lost right before the finals. It would always end up being like a comedy match. It would always end up being like a slow motion, you know, wacky match. Um, but but this was good, though. This was serious. Uh, this featured great talent. Uh, I mean, th- there's a little bit of comedy stuff in here, but it, they didn't really do it until after the match with Garcia and Mark Briscoe, uh, you know, doing the dance. I thought that was a lot of fun, but uh, you have an incredible amount of talent here. I thought the teams were kind of weird, though. I was just like, why don't you just put the the, the blue bracket against the gold bra- bracket? Instead, I was like, what are they going for here? I was like, is this old school Ring of Honor versus new school Ring of Honor? But then I'm just like, nah, not really. Yeah, 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 but then you got Garcia with the old school ROH guys, so you, you can't really say that they did that. I don't, I, I don't know how they booked this thing. I guess they were just going for babyface versus heel. I mean, it's, it's as simple as that. But you had, uh, you know, Blackpool Combat Club of uh, Claudio and Danielson teaming up with Mark Briscoe and also teaming up with Daniel Garcia. Garcia was the star of the match. He got the pinfall. Um, you know, they were even saying that he was the MVP of the tournament. And it's fucked up because I don't think I saw any of Garcia's matches. You know, the, the match with Danielson was on Rampage. So I just want to remind everybody, if you haven't seen the match with Danielson, it's actually on Rampage. Uh, so, yeah, obviously, that's why probably a lot of people uh, didn't get to see it. Uh, but they're taking on Brody King, Jay White, Jay Lethal, and uh, Roosh. You actually had Daddy Mac doing commentary. There there was some pretty pretty entertaining, entertaining stuff between Brody and, um, you know, Daddy Magic. Uh, yeah, Brody King was great there. Uh, he kind of reminded me of Braun Strowman, like when he was uh, trash talking to him. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought the match was good. I, I wasn't expecting Danielson to be on the show. I, I really wasn't. I, I thought he was probably already in Japan. Um, 
you know, getting ready for Wrestle Kingdom, but uh, pleasantly surprised uh, that Danielson was here. I, you know, D Danielson didn't overstay his welcome here. He just kind of played a supporting role. Uh, you know, Claudio was great. Him and him and Brody, you know, really went at it hard. I, I, you know, Mark Briscoe got some incredible hot tags here, and he also did some comedy stuff. So yeah, Mark Briscoe was was great. Um, you know, just just good action, crisp. It, it got time. Um, there was just a lot of consecutive finishers towards the end, and then and then uh, the, the closing sequence. You actually got Garcia doing a beautiful, um, you know, counter to the uh, lethal injection. He did like a uh, you know a, a jackknife pin to counter the lethal injection. Uh, so Garcia gets the uh, pinfall. Him and Mark Briscoe uh, celebrate, and, and they're dancing at the end of this thing. But yeah, you, you had an incredible amount of talent here. I, I wouldn't say the match is great, but. You know, it was it was really really good. I I think one of the problems with this show is, you just you just had you know too many eight man tag matches on the show, and, and you, you know the the card just didn't have a lot of depth. You know, coming off of the tournament, so I think that's that's one of the things that hurt the actual card. Um, no doubt about it. But uh, we're gonna move on here. We got uh we got Miro taking on Andrade Aladillo, um, coming out there with CJ. If you don't know who CJ is, she's formerly uh, Lana. That used to accompany Rusev down to the ring in the WWE, but uh, yeah, I mean, she was great here. This this was definitely the highlight of her AEW run so far. You got a Russo like swerve here with uh, with CJ. She she's really talking trash to Miro the whole match. Match. She's calling him an asshole. She's like, uh, you know, airing the dirty laundry. I think Taz even said, you know, you got a glimpse of what it's like to be in their living room. Almost like a flashback of, uh, you know, OJ and Nicole when they were showing, you know, the audio of them arguing, um, <laughs> you know, back in the day. So, you know, you got images of just couples, you know, fighting, you know, but, uh, but hey, man, you got a pretty crazy swerve there I, I thought the match was good though you know the, the the match didn't overstay its welcome but i thought it was i thought it was a pretty good match i i really i really thought you know you you, you saw some really really good dragon screws from andrade uh there was really really good submission you know submission breakups here where they you know they struggled to get to the ropes so uh good drama and then you got the nice little swerve at the end it was cj actually broke up i think it was the figure eight from andrade he was going for like a figure four or a variation of the figure eight and um yeah cj actually broke it up and uh you know helped her ex-husband uh win the match in miro so i thought that was good but yeah the, the the overall match was good i think andrade is a hell of a talent like he he really is but there seemed to be somewhat of a disconnection between him and the crowd tonight i don't know what it was they were definitely pro miro uh they they loved uh you know seeing cj reunite and, and turn on andrade so uh but yeah th definitely good stuff that definitely one of the one of the highlights of the show uh no doubt about it uh next up we have timeless tony storm uh defending the belt against uh rio um i i i, I thought it was okay um something was just lacking here like I, I just felt like rio had a tough time building momentum but by the end of the match uh she definitely did there was some really really creative spots with luther there was a really there was a must-see spot with luther that was pretty innovative but um yeah i mean you know so tony storm goes over in a little bit over 10 minutes i mean it, it really wasn't bad uh, but it wasn't anything too memorable either i i, I think rio she's nimble she's quick but um I don't know. I just expected, you know, just a little bit more here. The, the the Tony Storm stuff, this is, once again, very similar to the match at Full Gear. Just, you know, very over the top, very character driven. I, I just can't see the match. The match just never got into that next gear. And, you know, the, the crowd was kind of into Tony Storm, you know, and, and, and you know, the, the whole presentation. But it, it just kind of felt like, you know, towards the middle of it, they, they kind of lost the crowd. Um but it was good. It was definitely the better women's match of the night. Um, all right, next up we have Swerve uh, taking on Dustin Rhodes. Uh, so Keith Lee does not, uh, you know, show up for the show. I didn't even bother to find out what happened. I don't think they explained what happened here. But Swerve, you know, took out a cinder block, you know, before Dustin even gets into the ring. And he, he stomps his ankle with the cinder block. So Dustin is selling the ankle. He's debating, you know, they, 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 take him, they take him away. It looked like they were about to take him on a stretcher, but then Dustin comes back and sucks it up. I, I just thought this was weird. I thought it was weird booking. I, I, I just felt like this, you know, if you're going to do this, ju just make it nice and quick and make it a squash. Instead, they tried to, you know, force 
this Dustin Rhodes comeback, and you know the fans just weren't feeling it. And, and by the end of the match, you know Swerve eventually did go over. It, it felt like it took forever. Um, but when Swerve was, um, you know, walking uh, to the back, he was like, "I'm not wasting time anymore. Next time I'm on pay per view, I'm going for the championship." He's like, "I'm I'm sick of wasting time." So I apparently Swerve felt like the match was a waste of time, but. Um, I really feel like the next pay-per-view is going to be Joe versus Swerve. Uh, I don't think it's going to get the main event, but I would expect Swerve to win the championship, um, you know, maybe before Revolution. It, it is possible. If they do like a Dynamite special, uh, you know, in between, you know, Revolution, you know, maybe. But, you know, I, I, I think I think Swerve is definitely going to win the belt. I mean, he, he was really over. They were into Nana. They actually booed Dustin when he punched Nana. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, everybody, everybody was doing the Swerve dance when Swerve came out. Um, they were chanting Swerve's house the whole entire match. So, yeah, Swerve, Swerve, you know, besides MJF, Swerve was probably the most over guy on the show. All right, all right, here we go. Not not, not a great night for Jericho. Um, you know, if you're a Y2J fan, I, I, I would say this, 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 this would be the worst night for any Jericho fan. Um... You know, Jericho. Number one, Jericho didn't look great in the match. I, I I don't know what it was. Maybe maybe the booing just kind of magnified everything. But we got list sex gods of uh, Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara, Sting and Darby, uh, taking on Ricky Starks, Big Bill, and the Don Callis family of uh, Takeshita and the Powerhouse Hops. I, I really thought, you know, everybody looked good here <laughs> besides Jericho and Sting. I, I I just felt like all the younger guys delivered. Uh, you know, the, the, the booing just kind of took me out of the match. I, I, I just, you just hate hearing that much negativity towards a legend, someone that we idolize, someone that we grew up um, learning from and, you know, reading his books and, you know, learning from his highlight reels and to, to see the fans just, um, you know, boom, it's just it's just disheartening. But, you know, I don't know the whole story. I don't know what the, what the hell went on. Um, you know, but we'll see. But, um, you know, the, it, it, it really felt like. They made a conscious effort just to, you know, build the match around Sting, you know, having Sting say goodbye to the East Coast. You know, there were some double submissions with Jericho and Sting. You know, anytime Jericho did any offense, whether it be the cold breaker or, you know, any of his signature stuff, they just they just booed the crap out of him. Uh, some of the highlights here, I thought Takeshita stole the show. I, th I thought he was awesome. There was a triple uh, German suplex where, you know, Darby took the brunt of it. You know, that that was probably the spot in the match. Sammy goes over with a shooting star press. You know, I, I thought Big Bill looked good. Big, Big Bill and Powerhouse Hobbs, you know, dominant offense from them. Ricky was being more of the, um, was it the, you know, Taz had a really good line. He was like, he was being the offensive coordinator of the match. What, what, that might have been in the opening match, though. But, you know, that was a good, that was a really good line from Taz. Uh, but, yeah, th this this was the weaker eight-man tag of the night. But it, it, it still definitely had its moments. You know, you, you, you definitely had some great stuff here. The, the highlight would be, just any time to catch the, and, and I thought Darby, you know, were doing something. It was just, you know, really good stuff. But for the most part, there, there was a, there was a lot of, you know, n negativity in the air and, um, you know, definitely the weaker of the two eight man tags, just too many eight man tags in one night. I, I think uh, next up we have Julia Hart taking on, uh, Abaddon. This is spooky. The uh, house rules match for the AEW TBS championship. So, yeah, I, I mean, you, you know, it had a pretty cool environment at first. Like I, I think Abaddon really, you know, uh, caught the attention of the crowd. Um, you know, there was, this is spooky chance. There was, there was some pretty cool stuff going on, but you know, towards the middle of the match, I felt like they lost the crowd and, and they never really got it back. And, you know, sky blue, had some interference. She hit underneath the ring. Then Abaddon went looking for her. Then ultimately, at least to Julia Hart doing her moonsault and uh, celebrating with Sky Blue. So it definitely looks like Julia and Sky Blue are going for more of a gothic, um, you know, kind of uh, coalition. Uh, I thought they looked good together. It, it actually was believable. Um, you know, the idea of giving Abaddon the title shot, it's, I don't know. This is just something that just didn't need to be on the pay-per-view. Um, I, I definitely think the women's matches were the weak links uh, of the show. Uh, so we'll move on from there. All right, next we have Adam Copeland, better known as uh, Edge, lesser known as Sexton Hardcastle, uh, taking on Christian Cage. You know, you, you had the uh, Wayne family out there. And, um, you know, I, you got to give Nick Wayne credit. He he took the most ballsy bump of the night. Um, so so um, so Edge actually comes out with his, uh, you know, the same ring attire that he had at WrestleMania 22. 
Um, I, I don't know why. I, I, you know, I, obviously the the you know some of the fans were actually chanting, "We want fire." You know, maybe that's why because you know they were going to do the fire spot. Maybe because you know when he wrestled Foley uh, in that match, um, you know he did wrestle Foley in that match. So they're in Long Island. Maybe Long Island made him think of the the fire stuff. I have no idea, but uh, it was pretty cool. It, it, it was definitely recognizable that you know you know that Edge was wearing that same ring attire, but. Um, yeah, the, the match was good. The, the match came off great. I, you know, be, you know, I didn't know about the allegations at the time. So I, I, I expected the fans to turn on edge here and they didn't, they, they gave edge a ton of respect. They were chanting, you still got it. They, they were chanting TLC. Um, you know, they were chanting, we want ladders. So, you know, yeah, edge and Christian brought out the tables, ladders and, and chairs. Um, but it, it was a good brawl, though. It was definitely a good brawl. There, there, there was actually some really, really cool spots in in the crowd that had great, great camera angles as well. So, um, yeah, everything here was good. It, 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 you know, Edge Edge brought the intensity. He was actually bleeding from the, you know, from the um, from the orbital bone, the eye, and uh, it, it looked like it was like puffing out. It was really nasty looking. Um, you know, the 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 most dangerous spot, the match, the, the spot that shocked the shit out of me was edge actually took a, a sunset flip off the ladder from christian man i, I was kind of shocked by it because you know from my recollection like that was the you know i think edge even said it like that was the night he started feeling like his neck going when eddie guerrero gave him the sunset flip you know uh, off the ladder and it was you know there was other spots there as well so i was i was just surprised edge would take that bump you know after all he's been through but yeah, it was pretty damn cool. I mean, it, it was it was you know the, you, you just had a lot of uh, intensity here. Um, you, you had believable near falls. There, there were some really really good transitions into the kill switch from both Christian and Edge. I think Edge actually ended up winning the match with the uh, you know the unprettier the kill switch. But you know the the table stuff. You know it, it kind of you know it, it didn't go as smoothly as possible. But I'll tell you when they, when they flamed that table. It just, I don't know, man. You just have, you just have all these emotions just pop up. Like the first thing you're just wishing is that nobody gets hurt. No one gets burned. But, you know, it, 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 when you see that table flame up, it's just like, man, holy shit, this is, this is going to be crazy. So it, it, it added a lot of drama. There was a lot of intrigue. Uh, but, you know, the, the first time they tried to light it on fire, the, the flame actually died. So Edge had to light it back up. And, uh, you know, the Nick Wayne bump on the fire, it, you know, the ta I don't even think the table broke. And you didn't even see Nick Wayne uh, get any flames on him, which is good. But, you know, I don't know. I could have done without the whole fire spot. But at, at the same time, it's, the fans were expecting fire. I, I, I guess Edge's ring attire, you know, made them want to expect it. But, you know, the, the ending was a little bit weird here. You know, Edge actually does go over with the unprettier the kill switch and uh then all of a sudden luchasaurus comes out starts choke slam and edge and then he said then he brings out the contract and in this particular contract it's almost like a money in the bank thing this is this is almost like uh you know you know payback or, or karma for all the times edge has uh hijacked the title with the money in the bank or or whatever the vicky guerrero bullshit so so Christian actually, you know, regains consciousness and, and, and pleads, you know, Luchasaurus that he wants to sign the contract. So, so Christian signs the contract and they restart the match. And then Christian, you know, wins back the TNT championship. So it's understandable. You know, you don't want to see Edge hogging another title or hijacking another title because we've seen it enough. So Christian actually wins the TNT title back. I thought it was kind of weird booking, but, um, you know. In a way, you definitely understand it. Uh, you know, Edge even said it. he didn't even want to win the TNT title. So, you know, you, 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 you find a creative way to get Edge to win, but still you get the title back on Christian. And we'll just move on. <laughs> we'll just move on from there. All right, next we have Eddie Kingston and John Moxley. This is for the Triple Crown. Uh, yeah, Danderson doing commentary. Uh, I, I thought it was a match of the night. Uh, I thought it was great. You know, Eddie Kingston's chops were uh, incredible here. There were some really, really you know, awkward crash and burns. Um, you know, Eddie does the tope into the world's end uh, guardrail. And it, it really looked like Eddie went, you know, torpedoed into the into the uh, guardrail and it looked like he got a concussion. Like it was just head first. It was, you know, the, on commentary, they just sold it. Like, you know, maybe you have to stop the match. But thank God he was able to get through it. There was even just some, you know, nasty 
shots where he thought he might have you know broken his elbow even moxie was selling the the uh a leg injury because he wasn't getting up on time so there is all these like you know is is the guy really hurt or is he feigning the injury or is he overselling it there was just a lot of that going on but um yeah, Eddie Kingston with a kibashi like performance. Uh, this this is some of the stiffest chops I've ever uh, you know seen Eddie Kingston deliver. Uh, a lot of them really took you know Moxley took the breath out of him, took the life out of him. Like he would he just he just landed on his he just landed on his back you know after just getting chopped fr- from Eddie because he was so stiff with him. But yeah, Moxley brought the fight. I, I really think they topped uh, their match from full gear. I mean, it was really. Uh, just something to see. I mean, the the, the end that back fist to the future ending uh, was just sick. You know, one one of the one of the stiffest sequences of the year. Obviously, um, you know, Danielson was great on commentary too. He he's, he was talking about how he made such a big mistake last time he fought at Eddie by trying to drop bombs on him instead of doing technical wrestling. And you know, Danielson was even saying like when, when Eddie starts chopping you, there's really nothing you could do about it because they just come at you so fast and so hard. Uh, but yeah, Moxley selling was just um, you know incredible here. Uh, there there really wasn't that one part in the match where I thought you know Moxley was gonna you know, end up taking this thing, you know, I, there, there really was, it, it just felt like Eddie was pretty much, you know, what, once Eddie was able to get through that concussion angle, like it, it just felt like he was in control the whole match. It, it, it just felt like Eddie was a little bit stronger, a little bit more, like everything he did was a little bit more powerful, but you know, a good performance from Moxley. The, the one thing I wish they had done a better job of, uh, you know, leading up to this match was j- just make it a little bit more unpredictable. You know, when Moxley was talking down to Eddie, you know, he, it was almost like he was, you know, kind of psyching him up for the win. You know, I, 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 I wish they went with more of that, that full gear direction where, you know, the, you could just tell they both wanted it. In, in a way, it, it just it almost felt like Kingston just wanted it more than Moxley. It, it almost felt like Moxley was just kind of there doing the job by the way he executed the promo. But still a great match um yeah i i think i think it was definitely a uh you know a great ending to the tournament you know no matter how you look at it uh i I know it wasn't the sexy you know dream match everyone was expecting the the tournament final to be um but hey congratulations to eddie kingston uh triple crown uh winner you know you could definitely argue this is the biggest moment of his career you know you know even bigger than the quackenbush moment when he won the Chikara title you know, he, he, this even exceeds what he did at Grand Slam when he won the ROH title so uh, you, you definitely understand it so you know triple crown winner you know, it's Eddie Kingston wanted to live out his fantasy Danderson even talked about it he, he tried he tried to he tried to um you know create the moment for everybody through eddie kingston's eyes you know when when he grew up as a teenager or a kid you know watching all japan watching you know guys in the mid 90s win the triple crown um he illustrated the fact that you know it was very important to eddie kingston so i I think that moment kind of came across uh really really well so good stuff there and then and then the main event we have mjf uh taking on samoa joe for the AEW championship. So Adam Cole actually comes out on crutches. When Cole came out, I was just like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Um, but after this, um, after seeing how this played out, you know, it was it was definitely the obvious, uh, you know, choice. I mean, it, w- it was definitely the right choice because without Cole, uh, you know, doing the dynamite diamond spot, you know, it wouldn't have, this ending wouldn't have came off as well. But yeah, MJF had his uh, shoulder and, you know, his ribs all taped up. Uh, just, you know, th- th- this is just driven by Joe just being an ass kicker here. Um, you know, MJF just doing a lot of selling. I, I thought Joe looked great. You know, <laughs> Joe looked really frustrated when, when Cole came out. But, you know, other than that, I, I think Joe really did bring his A game. Like, you could tell, like, he was motivated here. You, you know, he, he he's, he's definitely, like, in such a nice little comfort zone uh, as a heel again. I, it, it just felt like he didn't have a lot of pressure on him. Um, but yeah, I, I, I thought, I thought Joe looked great here. Uh, I think him, him and MJF had good chemistry, but you know, I can't say that it was better than their grand slam match. I can't say that this was one of the better main events of the year. Um, you know, it didn't really get interesting until Bryce Remsburg took the ref bump. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, I pretty much already talked about it, you know, you know, that's like, you know, the referee went down, you know, MJF is asking Cole for the dynamite diamond, you know, cause you know, he's having a tough time with Joe because he's all like, you know, bandaged up and, you know, it really, really didn't have a lot of mobility because of the shoulder injury. So, um, so yeah, Cole just took way too long to give him the dynamite diamond. And by the, by the time he got it to him, Joe just choked him out and it, 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 it you know, MJF doesn't tap out, you know, the referee you know holds his hand three times on the third time the hand just went down and the fans just didn't buy it the fans were just like what the fuck they were chanting bullshit they they just really did not want to accept the fact that mjf you know lost the belt here um so yeah aftermath was pretty cool i, I will say this too the mjf's video introduction here they, they did like a collage of all his long island you know all, all the um you know you know donut shops and you know stores and you know people he grew up with uh in long island kind of uh shouting at mgf saying that he's our scumbag and then when mgf comes out they're chanting he's our scumbag so it actually came off really well i, I think it hyped people for the main event um so then the aftermath here cole gets in the ring it looks like he's gonna hit mjf with the crutches then all of a sudden the uh you know the 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 devil's uh, cronies come out, and then all of a sudden the lights go out for about seven seconds. And when they come back on, Cole is actually sitting in a chair, and he's clearly the devil. And he actually shows the devil mask, and then everyone else takes their masks off, and then you get to see Warlow, Roderick Strong, uh, Matt Taven, Mike Bennett, and uh, yeah, Adam Cole is the devil as uh predicted so so what would <laughs> what would have been a really really uh you know fucked up way to fuck up this angle i, I i've heard it time and time again like if, if they if they mess up this angle and adam cole is not the devil uh you know the, the, this is really going to be bad uh, so yeah i mean the, the two obvious choices were you know roger strong is part of it but you know it had to be adam cole uh, i had a dream that the devil was going to be kevin nash uh so yeah i i don't think that would have been awful but you know i'm sure people would have had their gripes with it i, I think what what would have been the the craziest thing would have been the devil to be tony khan like that that would have been really really crazy and i was actually thinking of it like leading up to the match if tony khan would be the devil because of the, you know going back to the pipe bomb with mjf and the contract stuff you know mjf's contract is coming up you know that would have been cool too but you know that that would have been like your wcw russo over the top uh you know swerve so yeah you know someone even said it like if it's not adam cole then then it really would have fucked up this whole storyline so uh yeah that's pretty much it uh i'll just leave you with this yeah the, the jericho stuff kind of leaves a negative uh stench over this show which definitely does suck um but yeah samoa joe is the new aew champion eddie kingston to triple crown champion and i'll leave you with this i wanted to, i'm in the mood to do something wacky something stupid uh but yeah i remember there was this kid in my class that looked like uh, samoa joe so i went up to him and i just went like joe 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 and i'll leave you with that and i'm out